Today's video is sponsored by the Art Piece of the Week. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to join Team Strong Art so you'll be the first to know when I drop that fire. All right, let's get into it. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Chris Stronger, aka Isula Guru, and today I'm doing a breakdown of a little bit of a review or a little bit of a session I was having with my guy, a kosher clinician. We were talking about this R. Kelly case, man. Uh, we we're going over like, you know, what I mean, some of the some of the points of what's really going on with him on a psychological level. Um, I had my opinions about it, you know, and my overall opinion really is just that. I feel like we all took an L on this one. You know what I mean? I kind of feel like we all let R. Kelly down. Um, had he not, had he had a better structure around him as a child, it's possible that he could have had a different outcome. I mean, because we got, you know, my guy kosher, he asked, you know what I'm saying? He was just like, hey, you know, what was going on with him psychologically as a child that could have led to this? And it made me think about it. You know what I mean? After the show, I thought about it. And, you know, I was thinking like, you know, what more could we get into about this whole topic? Now, me personally, I kind of feel like it's, this is probably as far as this is going to go. I mean, he did what he did. It happened. We can kind of play back and forth with nuances of, of um, you know, how hard his sentence should be. You know, was he traumatized as a child? Stuff like that. But I want to go ahead and play a clip for y'all. I want y'all to check this out. And um, we're going to do a quick little mini breakdown of what was going on so let me go ahead and cue this up real quick let me turn this back on turn me off all right so yes yeah, my guy coach condition this is me and us we were talking about this thing uh uh the other day man and uh fair use fair use let's get it out of it in that type of situation if they're the type of woman who does not want to take accountability it is within her trait of, of basically lying and trying to snake their way out of situations and trying to uh, essentially buck the system. Instead of doing the right thing, they'd rather cover up and find different ways to do things instead of, you know, going straight on into it. But see, but that's a man's position. That's generally a man's position to get in there and be the tip of the spear for the family and the household. But when you don't have that tip of the spear and you just have his mother who is just operating on her own, her own, um, on her own, uh, laurels what happens now see once again this is a result of what happens of coming from uh, a broken culture man broken society man like this is what happens when fathers are not in household like I said and the young children man like these young boys they have to grow up in these communities where they're like targets they don't have cover you know what I mean there's nobody there to help them right a lot of times these young men, they just want to have a cry for help, but they can't always get it. It's called chaos. It turns into chaos. There it no, is. I, I, I totally concur with you. All right, now here we go. He he about to uh, he about to lead us into the uh, to the question. Man, um, it's definitely a level of chaos, um, and I think you're seeing that chaos continue to more or less uh, manifest itself more so now than they ever been before in human history. Right now, Chris, over 73% of children are born in single parent homes. I think almost 60% are born out of wedlock. With the rates that are precipitating, it's no wonder that there would be more sexual abuse and molestation cases by children because a lot of the kids don't have the covering and the protection that they need. You would be surprised if some of the women that you've dated have more or less been victims of sexual abuse, but at the same time, a lot of men have been victims of sexual abuse Fair use, fair use. But a lot of times, women that abuse boys, they say it's a rite of passage for the boy, but they don't understand that sometimes these boys that have been molested or had their sexual uh, nature uh, charged. Isn't, isn't that sick, though? Like, think about how sick that is in our community, man. Like, you have these young men talking about the things that women have done to them, and, you know, the narrative or, like, the mindset is just to kind of, like, laugh at them or shame them, you know what I'm saying? Like, they kind of tell them, like, oh, man, you shut up, you chump, man. You don't even know what you're talking about. Like, bro, are you supposed to, like, well, why, are you scared of girls and this and that? Yeah, bro, like, it's just so chaotic, man. It's just 
Uh, it, it disgusts me. It really does, bro. Real, real talk. It shit disgusts me, bro. Oh, at such an early age, actually can objectify women, become confused about sex, and also become very promiscuous and very hypersexual. Mm -hmm. The same thing that happens a lot of times, Chris, to boys that are molested. Sometimes the molested becomes predators. But we don't look at it from a... Now, see, once again, though, I had to, had, I had to jump in on this point when he said that is the very thing that, you know, women will shame us for. You know what I mean? Um, generally, black women, but women in general, will kind of have like a, a stigma against black men. We hi hypersexualize and all this other stuff. And I'm pretty sure I said it right here in the clip in the video. But, you know, that hypersexualization of black dudes um, and how we have to have this persona of being just these, you know, uh, like, you know, when it comes to the bedroom game, we got to know how to put it down. We got to be like a superhero. You know what I'm saying? We got to be toting like a 10 inch wood. You know what I mean? And it's just like, you know, these perceptions of us were being hypersexualized. I, you know what I'm saying? Didn't really think about this before, but as, as, as he dropped that point, talking about how the things that happen to these young men at a young age kind of opens them up sexually when they're younger you know what i'm saying and that's some deep stuff that i didn't even really think about until he really kind of dropped that ball you know what i'm saying and he just was saying like hey this is this gets real deep this gets into what happened to these young men at childhood and then it's, it's it's almost like the curse or the gift that keeps on giving it's just like man like because these these guys these young men act this way um you know we'll just, just imagine the cycles like this you know, these young women, they'll grow up and they'll have traumatic things happen to them sexually. They'll get sexually abused. And then when they get to a certain age, they'll continue to cycle by touching on, you know, little boys in their family or some crazy shit like that. Right. And then these little boys will grow up to turn into the type of dudes that abused them when those young girls were younger. So it's like the cycle that just just continues to be destructive and, and, and chaotic, bros. Oh, horrible clinical lens we're looking through the lens of emotion and we just say well he needs to go to jail he's a he's a, he's a uh, predator he's whatever but we don't look at all the factors that made r kelly if r kelly grew up in a home where he had a strong father a loving mom do you think r kelly would turn to the man that he became and there it is that that to me that question right there really 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 kind of put me in his own thought and one of the ones i had to go back and think about um this just uh you know what let me let me let me go ahead and let me rock <laughs> on the clip and then i'll jump in i would have to say that statistically uh the outcome would forgive be forgive my mic being trash by the way i, I was i was struggle streaming over there forgive my mic being trash be dramatically different it would be right. this numbers say that that would more than likely would not have happened and like you just said is that oh for a a, a, a older woman to kind of mess with a younger boy is is like you said seen as a rite of passage to some degree but you said what are the what are the ramifications of that oh well look now we have this hypersexualized young male black child but oh guess what that's normal because that's what we're known to be these sexual deviants who don't know how to control ourselves, you know what I'm saying? So so look at once again, there's the cycle. You know what I mean? So these these these, these young men who are out here, uh, you know what I'm saying, can't control themselves or are essentially like lusting after women, chasing after women. It's all about how many, you know what I'm saying, young ladies you can slay in the bedroom and all this stuff and stuff. I mean, that's an example fair where use, the type of mentality use. comes from. You know what I mean? Because if you got a young man like R. Kelly who who went through those type of traumas and situations and then it seems like wasn't nobody there to help him what's going you know what i'm saying like it, it here we the outcome you know what i'm saying he's going to be a deviant in some type of way because of what happened to him he's going to be looking for an outlet eventually to try to correct what happened to him in his own mind he's basically going to take justice to his own hands that comes from lack of a community and, and lack of strong men in the community right 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 i totally agree with you um it's, it's a lot of um, uh, corroborating factors that are going on. Rodney Thomas said that mental health only matters until the afflicted causes harm to others. What's and you know, Rodney Thomas, man, uh, shout out to him, yo. He's dead on. He's dead. He's dead on. 
uh, all parties are guilty. And once again, that was one of the biggest things I was trying to get in across, get across uh, while we were having this discussion is everybody's at fault. Everybody who enabled them, everybody who knew what was happening behind the scenes, and they continued to let this foolishness carry on for as long as it did to the end result wound up being, you know, a, another one of our, you know, brothers who got out there, um, did what he had to do, became a celebrity. You know, he was on his A1. Everybody was uplifting him in the community. Everybody loved his music. You know, the brothers got talent, but at the same time, you know, he fell prey to his demons. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, you know, when uh, Kosher, you know, he asked that question back there. Um, to me, that was one of the biggest points that stands out about how we collectively kind of take this L because of how everyone around him let him down and he found his way in the jail. He found his way in the jail. And I feel like as, you know, I mean, whatever semblance of a community that we have going on, I feel like these are the things that when I say that we have community issues or we don't have a community, these are the type of things I'm talking about. Let me uh, skim through here and check the government. Let's see. Okay. All right. So yeah, that's that's pretty much all I was gonna uh, get in on that. But um, let me get this. Hold on. Use my window capture. So yeah. So that's 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 holistically my point about this. I feel like. You know, we all kind of let R. Kelly down, you know what I'm saying, to a degree, as far as it looks kind of bad for all of us. And once again, another one of our celebrities gets caught up in, in just chaos, man. Could he have got a lighter sentence if they would have talked about how um, he would have had been experiencing some psychotraumatic situations when he was a kid if they would have brought that up in in the court case could that have mattered possibly like i said in that video uh of a coach clinician go watch it uh shout out to him goes y'all go subscribe to him like i said in that video that we did possibly but at the end of the day he's already done enough trying to plead on some type of oh he has illness that's only going to do so much i, I mean even the fact that they hit him with the RICO charges, um, they use the, uh, I believe it's called the Man Act to also incriminate him even further. Like, man, it's just, it's, it's such a bag of cats, man. It's so chaotic that we let it, or those who were involved, those who were enabled, let it get this far and let it go this far, man. It's, it's just sad, sad, my G. Um, this is a tough one. Like I said, I don't see a lot of people having you know a lot of different different differing uh, opinions about it i kind of feel like everybody is pretty much just looking at this shaking their heads like yo this is sad man and what can we do to not let this happen again is within our households because everything kind of comes back to having stronger families within our households let's have better structures around the kids i mean i know it ain't perfect and i know everybody's not in a position to just do that but i'm saying for the future what we can do is the same thing that could mitigate and probably knock out the majority of the things that we deal with specifically is get our households in order but that does come with working out and ironing out the factors and the issues that are going on in our community. Now, uh, I know that earlier today, or earlier, I believe it was on, it was on Jessica X, Jessica X is live. She had Obsidian on there and uh, they were talking about how they could kind of fix the issues within um, the community. And Obsidian had mentioned, oh, we should just, we all just need to sit up. We just need to all sit down and talk it out. Well, well, we started kind of going back and forth, with, you know, some different, different opinions there. Uh, about how we should come to that conclusion but mm, when anton got on there he made the point that as men 
Uh, I think he has something called like the Council of Kings, if I'm not mistaken, that Anton has kind of like his, 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 um, his, uh, his, one of his setups that he has. I don't know if it's another channel or another show that he does called the Council of Kings, but he mentioned something about the Council of the Kings that as men, we do need to sit down and as men, we need to work together as far as how to figure out what's one of the best ways we can really get things done and that the women will follow suit. I do believe that we can discuss certain things with uh, the women of the community, but I and think in that situation, in regards to the topic, because it was revolved around Courtney and, um, uh, 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 oh, I can't remember the girl, the other girl's name, the, the, the girl from Lebanon, uh, you know, it was more, more or less revolving around their kind of, you know, bumping heads a little bit. And how basically Courtney getting knocked off of her spot as being the darling, as Jessica called her, the darling, as Jessica called her, you know what I'm saying, knocking her off her spot. Um, but in regards to getting things right, like I said, Anton was talking about, man, we need to come together and start to build as men. And I honestly think that'll be more effective, more effective than how Obsidian was trying to say it and come together and we need to be these super builders with our women now let me explain exactly what i mean by that i feel like in regards to the obsidian versus anton kind of topic i think that the way we should kind of look at it is this as men when we finally start to sit down and come together and say hey this is what we're going to do this is the direction we're going to go in Generally, women are going to follow that. Okay. Generally, the women will follow that. Now, we can sit around and discuss some things with the women, but I think that for the bigger topics and the, the things that we really need to get involved with, I think it should be majority of us men, the builders, protectors, coming together and saying, this is what we're going to do. This is the plan. And we're going to go this direction. And the women will follow. That's how it should be. We talk about being leaders and protectors. I agree with that. And But Obsidian's point was mostly trying to say, oh, that's not going to happen in today's, you know, society or whatever. Um, I call bullshit on that uh, because we don't, I, I feel like we don't need to be bending the knee to society. You know what I mean? Because it almost, to me, almost kind of sounds like, oh, the black community isn't gonna go for that <laughs> you know like oh the black community won't go for us as men saying no this is what we're gonna do and y'all y'all gonna follow suit but who is the black community though because if you listen when they had courtney on the uh on the on the live stream with jessica x um shout out to jessica x by the way y'all go subscribe to her when when they had courtney on the live stream with jessica x um there was a dominican woman who got up on the panel and she said i'm trying to remember her name i can't remember her name but she basically said to courtney she just was like you basically you sound selfish because everything you keep saying my community my community my community uh you know uh my men my men and then the dominican girl basically said it's not your community and to me i was like fire that's fire because that's right you know what i'm saying black women check it out y'all need to understand understand something you may not consciously get it you may not consciously think about it this way but subconsciously it's almost like the mentalities oh this is my community these these are my men and the young dominican lady was saying nobody belongs to anybody and i'm honestly gonna rock more with that now she was getting a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, a lot of heat in the comment section, talking about you know oh you know you don't know what you're talking about this and that and Courtney's like no I feel like these are my men and this and that this and that and the third once again no slight to Courtney uh, respect to her shout out to Courtney um, she was you know I, she she was cool I don't really have no issue no smoke with Courtney um, but I think that overall we're seeing a mentality of the black community which is really why men and men who are realizing to keep saying, yeah, it's a matriarchy because every time we have somebody speaking about black community in this regard, 
or just in the way it was being talked about in that in that live stream, you see how Courtney as a black woman felt like she had to be the, the, the protector general and, and and defender. Like just the, the almost the aggression in which she was trying to defend the black community is a masculine trait. I'm not saying Courtney's masculine. I'm just saying that in that sense, that mentality, which is something that a lot of our women have, is a masculine trait because y'all feel like y'all the, the backbone of the community and this and that, and y'all have been mentally, you know, like I said, it's a subconscious thing. Y'all have been elevated, okay, above your men. And that's how, regardless if you want to agree to that or not, but it plays out in how you, you, uh, how you talk to us, how you speak about us when we're not around the actions and how y'all are just so carefree to just pop off at the mouth and be aggressive reckless and do whatever you want you know what i'm saying the lack of respect and it, I, I can go on and on right i'm not trying to just bash black men and black women and just run y'all into the ground and all that ah, nah i got better things to do than do all that but i'm speaking to the point of the issues within the community first of all i'm gonna say this and kevin samuels talked about this as well about how what would have to be corrected in the black church in order for men to come back. He told the pastor, he said, y'all gonna have to share power. Black women in the black community, y'all gonna have to step down from power. Facts. You you're, Listen, you can't be the ones who are, the, 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 <laughs> the ones who are in power in the community but then have these strong masculine men that are just gonna be leading, leading, leading because y'all are already in that position. So as black men, we'll just sit back and be like, okay, so what's my job? What am I supposed to do? And then when you see brothers speak out about it, it's all this heat and all this flack. It's all this drama when you see brothers speak out about that and say, hey, y'all need to chill, the attitude, this and that, and the, uh, chill out. Don't be putting yourself out there, uh, out there. you know what I mean? Knock it off with the ratchet stuff. Don't be twerking up on somebody's tables. And then, then a black man will come out and tell y'all, hey, knock it off. I put millions of dollars of my own money into this restaurant. Y'all want to jump down his throat. Now, we know the rap sheet. We ain't got to get all into it. But then again, when black men say, well, psh, well, since y'all don't want to listen, I guess we're just going to have to go build our empire somewhere else with women who want to follow our game program. And in regards to the, 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 the discussion between Anton and Obsidian, I feel like men are actually generally more moving, maybe even quietly, in the direction that Anton is already putting out. Men are going their own way. They're saving themselves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And Obsidian is talking about, oh, we just need to go all come back to the table. So shout out to Obsidian. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I, I rock with him, you know what I mean? And, and I like how, like how he's moving as well. But just um, in this context, for the for the brother Obsidian, it's just kind of like, Obsidian, my guy, it's like, we've, we've been there. Like, I'm telling you, the Zillennials, not having, the Zillennials are not going to sit down and and beg and plead and, and try to, and especially to the younger, you know, millennials, like, you know what I'm saying, myself, you know what I mean, millennial, younger millennial, like, I'm, a, I'm 33, so, like, a lot of us, we're not, <laughs> we're not, we're not waiting, that's what these little pocket movements are all about, under red pill, red pill is first the awareness, and then within the awareness, you just, you decide what pocket you want to go into, all right? But then men will try, men, men will generally get shamed for being, say, SYSBM or MGTOW or whatever they're trying to do because men are coming together and comparing notes and saying, bruh, you don't have to go through all that drama. You don't have to go through all that nonsense. You can get your passport, head over to uh, the DR, head over to Colombia, down to Brazil. That's, that's why we, that's why we advocate that. Okay because we're not talking we're not waiting on some 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 uh what by some bipartisan uh decision and we're gonna come together with some vote and we're all just gonna no we're going this way y'all can meet us but it's not really so much that's really finna be discussed and talk about because we can already see like i said in the video in the clip 
with with uh with uh, my guy Coach Condition, you can already see the nuclear fallout. I called it the nuclear fallout that is happening within our community and our culture, our so-called community. And I, I call it a so-called community because what I, I can't call myself a part of all of this that's going on. Okay. To, 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 to pridefully say, oh, this is all us. That's just us. That's just us. That's just, we, yeah, the ratchet and all this other stuff and, and all the things that are happening. Well, that's just us because we just got to claim it. We just got to say that that's us. We just got to rock with that. No, we don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. We can have higher standards. Not only as black men, but as black people. It's okay to have higher standards. We don't have to be the street thugs, the hood, the ratchets, the thoughts. We don't have to be that. We can actually do better. But oh, when you say that, oh, oh, you're trying to be like the white man. Really? Come on, man. I mean, I, I get so bent out of shape when people start to just blame stuff on the racism angle. And it's like, we understand what happened in history. But there comes a point to where you have to understand that certain things will be categorized as racist and they really are when somebody is being prejudiced preju prejudice against you and at that point yes you do need to address them as hey i'm not taking that racism from you or i'm not going to stand for your prejudice facts do that but as a community i feel like we don't need to be crying wolf every time somebody has a different differing opinion from the black community is somehow a coon racist or trying to be like the white man or Eurocentric. We define Eurocentric. And the one thing I did want to ask Courtney, and if she sees this video, the one thing I wanted to ask, define the black community. What is the black community? I want you to tell me what is the black community that, that you defend so much and so hard? What is it? Describe it to me and tell me why men like me should continue to be a part of it. Sell me on our community and tell me what it is that you're defending so much that everybody else says, hey, we need to work on this. And then we'll get together with some some women, not all, try to talk to them about it and say, hey, yo, this needs to stop. We need to cut this out. But y'all don't want that. Because you got every excuse under the moon about why this is wrong. You're judging me. You're shaming me. To... Fine. Have it. Y'all can have it then. Y'all can have it. But like we've already talked about, and you've heard pretty much every brother in the manosphere say, winter's coming. Matter of fact, winter's pretty much here. All right? If I'm not mistaken, uh, <laughs> it's going to be November soon. And nobody's coming to save you. But it is what it is. Anyway, that's the video for today, guys. I just want to go ahead and get that off my chest. Shout out to my guy, Coach Condition. Uh, shout out to Jessica X. Shout out to Obsidian. Shout out to Anton. Shout out to Courtney. Shout out to all of y'all. You know what I mean? Um, I got much respect for all of you guys, man. Um, I'm watching y'all's content. I'm subscribed, um, and uh, I just want to keep bringing this content for you guys, man. Um, this is a great topic. Also, hey, leave a comment down below uh, about anything you may want me to review, or if you have any rebuttals, or if I'm completely off, let me know down in the comment section, all right? Let me know. Let me know how you're feeling, all right? Like, comment, subscribe, all right? Let your boy know how you feeling. I could be completely off on this topic. I could be completely crazy. Well, let me know. All right? Let me know. All right? Help me help you. All right? Thank you guys for being here. And I'm going to see you on another one. Peace. Trent said I got style for you. Ain't seen you at the top. It's been a while for you. Big you up and they look down on you. Take one lost, no one's around for you. I won't stop. I won't stop. I won't stop. No, 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 no. I won't stop.
won't stop. Won't stop. Yeah. I'm so handsome. All in karma, 